So before we look at how protons, neutrons and electrons were discovered, let's have a look at what they are and how they're arranged inside atoms. I should warn you though that when it comes to atomic structure, you really need to know about 10 or so different things before any of it really makes sense, but you can only learn one thing at a time. Once you do learn the basics though, everything else is just examples and finer details. So let's begin. We now know that all atoms are made of what's called a nucleus, made up of two types of particles called protons and neutrons, which is surrounded by much smaller particles called electrons that move around the nucleus at enormous speeds. Protons and neutrons are often collectively called nucleons since they make up the nucleus. The plural of the word nucleus is either nucleuses or nuclei. Even though there are more than a hundred elements, the atoms of every single one of them are made up of just three types of particles, which are often called subatomic particles. Different atoms have different numbers of these three subatomic particles. This atom has two protons and two neutrons in its nucleus, and it has two electrons moving around the nucleus. It is in fact a helium atom, or rather a representation of a helium atom. We can't actually see any of these particles, and in this animation they're not drawn to scale. The protons have a positive electrical charge and the electrons have a negative electrical charge. The neutrons are neutral. But what is electrical charge? Well, it's a little like magnetism. Magnets have a north pole and a south pole. Two north poles repel one another, two south poles repel one another, while a north pole and a south pole attract one another. Some magnets can be very strong and provide a large force while others are fairly weak. Electrical charge is similar, but is described as being either positive or negative. The positively charged protons attract the negatively charged electrons and stop them from flying away. In that sense, it's a little like the gravitational force of attraction between the Sun and the Earth, which keeps us orbiting the Sun. The electrons don't fall into the nucleus because they've got energy and they're moving around the nucleus. Though the strength of magnets can vary, the size of the charge on all protons is exactly the same, and the size of the charge on all electrons is exactly the same. Also, the size of the positive charge on each proton is equal to the size of the negative charge on each electron, despite the fact that protons are much, much bigger than electrons. In fact, protons and neutrons are approximately equal in mass, but they're nearly 2,000 times more massive than electrons. So why don't the protons in the nucleus, which are all positively charged, repel each other and fly apart? Well, while most of us are familiar with the force of gravity and with the forces associated with magnets and electrostatic charges, there is another force of nature with the somewhat unusual name of the strong nuclear force. This force acts between protons and neutrons in the nucleus and keeps them bound within the nucleus. We don't really see it in everyday life, but without it, there wouldn't be any atoms. In a pure sample of any given element, the number of positively charged protons in the nucleus, in this case three, equals the number of negatively charged electrons, so that, overall, the charge on the atom is zero, since the positive charges balance out the negative charges. In previous episodes, we were illustrating atoms as solid spheres, but it turns out that they're not really solid at all. They're mostly empty space. However, the electrons are spinning around the nucleus so fast that the atom effectively becomes, more or less, like a sphere. It's a bit like the blades of a fan. When the fan blades are still, they act like three distinct blades. When they're moving though, it's almost as if they become one solid disk-like unit. Even hydrogen atoms, which have only one electron, are spherical. Now atoms are defined by how many protons they have in their nucleus. By definition, all hydrogen atoms have one proton in their nucleus. All helium atoms have two protons in their nucleus. All lithium atoms have three, all beryllium atoms four, and so on. The number of protons in the nucleus is referred to as the atomic number and is given the symbol Z, 
or Z if you prefer. This letter stands for Zahl, which is the German word for number. Mendeleev based his periodic table on the relative atomic weights of the elements, that is, how heavy each atom is compared to hydrogen. However, our modern periodic table organises the elements according to atomic number, which I'll say again is the number of protons in each atom. This produces a much better set of patterns in the physical and chemical properties of the elements. Carbon has an atomic number of six, so every carbon atom in the universe has six protons in its nucleus. Here we've drawn... You've just been watching a short excerpt from Shedding Light on Atoms Episode 5, Protons, Neutrons and Electrons. In this episode of the Shedding Light on Atoms series, we explain what protons, neutrons and electrons are and describe how they're arranged inside atoms. We then look back at the experiments that led to the discovery of these three particles. We demonstrate how electrons were discovered in the 1890s. And then introduce the concept of radioactivity. Since the discovery of radioactivity, also in the 1890s, opened up a whole new window into the study of atoms and their structure. We explain how, by directing a stream of alpha particles, a form of nuclear radiation at different atoms, scientists worked out that atoms were composed of a tiny positive nucleus made of protons and neutrons, which was surrounded by electrons. Thanks for watching. Oh, no, no, no.